All right, hey there folks. So let's talk uh, and work through these last couple of questions. So starting in the usual way, of course, so degree of unsaturation. All right, so I'm seeing one degree of unsaturation and I'm seeing a carbonyl peak. Uh, okay, so there's our one degree of unsaturation taken care of. We're gonna ignore this peak at zero. It's coming from tetramethylsilane, um, which is a, a peak put in as a, as a reference peak. So it doesn't interact. Um, and so people will, take their spectrum and put TMS at, at zero and then all peaks now are relative to that. So that's what this shift comes from. It's shifted down from uh, TMS, tetramethylsilane. So what have we got here? If we use our table, keep in mind that we have that carbonyl. So we've got a signal at about 4.5. We've got another one at about 3.8 and then we've got one at 1 1.8 and they integrate for 1H, uh, looks like 3H and 3H. So remember, you can go back to the video if you wanna figure out how those work, but basically I'm looking at the relative ratio between those integral heights, and that's how I came up with those in integral numbers. Okay, then in terms of multiplicity, um, that first peak was expanding, so it was hard to see. It was so close to the baseline. So it's a quartet, which tells us that those protons are, are next to three non-equivalent uh, neighbors, so probably next to a CH3 group. Uh, and this methyl is a singlet, and so it's isolated. It has no non-equivalent neighbors uh, near it. C is a doublet, and so it has one. Um, non-equivalent neighbor. And so all, right away, we can kind of say that we can see that that CH and the CH3 um, are linked together in the spectrum. So as I draw the fragments out, so here we've probably got a CH, a CH3, a methyl that's isolated, and then another methyl. And so the fragments that we have to work with are the CH, we know it's already bonded to the CH3, the methyl. So those stay stuck together. We know that we have a carbonyl group. We've got that other methyl. And then just double check back at the, at the formula in the spectrum. So we've got another oxygen atom to think about. And we have a chlorine. All right, so try to you try putting those together in a couple of different ways, uh, but maybe one of the ways that we're going to do that is to keep that methyl group isolated. So put it next to the carbonyl. Double check with uh, the chemical shift information. So if it were next to a carbonyl group, it would come around two, two and a half, but it's at three point eight, so that doesn't quite work. Um, okay, so what if then 3.8, well that could be if it were next to an oxygen, particularly oxygen of an ester. So that would still be a proton that was isolated next to an oxygen that would give it the chemical shift that we need there. All right, so what's next? Well, if I put that chlorine over on the carbonyl, then the molecule will be done and I have no room for my last the last fragment. So that can't be where that goes. Pretty much only one choice left and that's gonna, that's it, that's, it's gonna go there. Has to go at one of those sites. And then the chlorine over to the other one. Okay, so I've assembled the different fragments that I had found. Um, I can certainly redraw this to make it a whole lot easier to see. There's that molecule. 